So this is part two of We Who Are Many Are One. It's not an individual statement, is it? Let's say it together. <laughs> we who are many are one. See, it was written to a church in the first place, and it, it needs a church to make sense of it. I love the way whoever designs these slides has made it look like a puzzle. I only spotted that online this week. Thank you, whoever did that. Every piece is important to the whole picture. This is about us. Say that to someone near you. This is about us. You know, it's always been God's purpose to have a people in whom to reproduce his life and his character. From the very beginning when he said, it's not good for man to be alone. All the way through the history of his people Israel, right up to why Jesus died. We, we can and we often do think very individualistically about why Jesus gave himself, and that's fine. Paul said, the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. But we can all too easily miss what Paul writes in Titus 2 and verse 14. This is why Jesus gave himself. He gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. A people, a people comprising Jew and Gentile, black and white, old and young, rich and poor. And this series is tapping into God's desire for a people. And Dave, in his introductory video to it, if you caught that uh, on the Emmanuel News, asked us to imagine what Emmanuel Church might look like if we celebrated the many more than we do and grew in our oneness. The challenge is, can we do both? Can we celebrate a growing diversity of ages and races and backgrounds and remain united? 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and surrounding chapters point us to resources that will help us to rise to the challenge. And last week, Matt highlighted the resource, uh, if we can call it that, of one spirit. As we look to the giver more than to the gifts, we will be more likely to be humble and generous with what we've received. We share the giver in common and then can use our many gifts for the common good of the church and our, as we've been reminded this morning, broken world. This week, I want to point us to the resource of one Lord, as we home in on two references to Lord in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 to 6. Let me read that uh, to us now. I'm reading from the New International Version. Now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed you know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who's speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, 
but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Let's pray together and ask for God's help. Father, we, we ask that you'd help us pull off both. The many and the one. The diversity and the unity. Please would you help us to be the people that your son gave himself for. Please will you shape us by your word and by your spirit. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So in common with all who uh, recite, declare the Nicene Creed, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. Or to confess the same faith in a, a slightly earlier form, we declare Jesus is Lord. It's how we become part of the people. Writing to the church in Rome, Paul says, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's how we join the people. Have you said that yet? Is that your declaration of faith? Jesus is Lord. It's a, it's a Holy Spirit enabled response to what God the Father has done. You see, after Jesus had humbled himself and become obedient, even to death on a cross, God raised him up and gave him the name that's above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Gordon Fee says that it's the ultimate Christian confession. Jesus, the crucified one, is by his resurrection Lord of all the universe. Let's not say it lightly. It's what got Stephen stoned to death. Because it was blasphemy to Jewish ears. It was blasphemy as well to pagans whose deities were referred to as lords. And it later became contrary to, to emperor worship, where people were asked, forced to say Caesar is Lord. They needed the, the understanding and the courage that the Holy Spirit gives to say, Jesus is Lord. And we need the Holy Spirit to truly confess and keep confessing that Jesus is Lord because there are still many rival claims to our allegiance. There are Many lords out there. Who's in charge of our spending habits, for example? Who's in charge of our viewing habits? Remember, a, a Kenyan bishop issued the challenge. If he's not lord of all, then he's not really lord at all. We who are many have one Lord. We have a common confession. We say Jesus is Lord. That's the first Lord reference. And the second Lord reference in 1 Corinthians 12 links together service 
and Lord. We read it in verse 5. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Just as the one Spirit gives many different gifts, the one Lord gives many different kinds of service. And we'll come to the variety uh, in a little while, but first let's acknowledge how appropriate it is for service and Lord to be linked. This Lord didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant. We're still learning from Philippians 2. He said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. This Lord turns worldly ideas of lordship on their head. He doesn't lord it over people. He gives his life as a ransom for many. And when we serve, there's an opportunity for the the reproduction of his character in us. And just as there are many different kinds of gifts, there are many different kinds of serving. Different kinds. Different kinds. Different kinds. Paul says it three times in in three verses. I kind of think he's trying to make a point about variety, about diversity. Don't get fixated on one way of serving. Matt continued the reading last week and read out the by no means exhaustive list of gifts that follows, illustrating the diversity. Diversity is beautiful. It reflects the character of God. The God who is the foundation of both our unity and diversity in the church. I asked earlier on, can we do both? Can we both celebrate a growing diversity and be united? Knowing the God who is Trinity, I believe we can. Knowing the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I believe we can. The Trinity's here in verses Four to six, different gifts, same spirit. Different services, same Lord. Different workings, same God. The Trinity's in the Ephesians 4 reading that Matt uh, referred to last week. One spirit, one Lord, one God and Father of all. And the spirits in the prayer Paul prays at the end of 2 Corinthians. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Paul knows this triune God. He knows that unity does not imply uniformity. We don't all have to serve in the same way. I was doing it this morning. I I love watching those who serve us on the drums. This morning it was Paul, but sometimes it's Lee Kai, David, Andy. I love the way they serve us in our worship. It's so helpful. Just imagine if everyone drummed. That was the way we all chose to serve. There would be an abundance of rhythm. But no melody, no harmony, no words, just rhythm. Diversity of service is beautiful. 
Paul finishes chapter 12 with another list as his plea for diversity continues. Verses 27 to 31. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. A bit like pieces in the jigsaw puzzle. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. Again, not not an exhaustive list, but notice the variety. Apostles alongside those able to help others. Prophets alongside those with gifts of administration or guidance, as it reads here. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? The answer is an obvious no. 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 There are many ways of serving. Many ways of reproducing the character of the one Lord. And that's true here at Emmanuel. We are so grateful for our drummers. But also for our guitarists and keyboard players and violin players. And there have been cellists and flautists and trumpeters in the past who have blessed us. There is room for a growing diversity. We're so grateful uh, for all of those. And we're grateful too for people who serve in less upfront ways. Those who come early on a Sunday and often stay late uh, so that we can have Seats to sit on. Isn't that great? Aren't you enjoying sitting on a seat this morning? They come early to make sure we have got sound and projection equipment set up. They come early so that we can be welcomed on the way in and that we can go through to prepared refreshments shortly. So many servants. I think they deserve our applause, don't you? Bless you. Thank you. There's room for a growing diversity. And I haven't mentioned that that growing number of people who exit after a couple of songs in brightly colored t-shirts serving a growing number of children and young people. And then there are those encouraged by Sue who are serving our communities particularly our marginalized communities in lots of of different ways. There is growing, there's room for a growing diversity of service. And that is just the organized service opportunities, some of which no doubt I have missed out. I'm sorry, the, the, the list just grows. Only God knows the vast number of acts of service that are happening day by day and week by week by people uh, in this room. So I'm just going to highlight two without naming names. Because you might be wondering, how can I serve? Well, maybe think about one of these ways of helping. There's someone in this room who pretty much every week phones me and asks how I am, how am I doing, and how's my family doing. Doesn't take long, but it means a lot. Maybe that's something you and I could do uh, for someone else. And then there are people here who release others to serve. And it's precious, just as precious as the serving that they release. 
For example, just, just recently there was a mum who came to the front to encourage us in something that, that she said. But that was possible because somebody else had offered to look after her young child. And that sort of thing is happening more and more, and it is beautiful. Maybe you or I could help it happen even more. Now, I know that finding a way to serve won't be everybody's response this morning. There are lots of people here who are maxed out in their serving and could probably do with taking a break in certain areas. So here's, here's two invitations that are open, I trust, to all. And the first is, let's lean into our value of honouring. Let's keep learning from Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who we find honouring each other. When we see someone serving, let's thank them. And let's especially speak well of those who serve in areas that are very different from the one that we might be serving in. And then secondly, let's keep letting Jesus serve us. Peter infamously said no to Jesus. No, you'll never wash my feet. And Jesus replies, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Before we do any serving, we need to let this one Lord serve us. That way our serving will be a grateful response and not a begrudging duty. Will you let him serve you now as we take communion together? As he says, this is my body which is broken for you, will you take a piece of bread and eat it and feed on him by faith? in your heart, with thanksgiving. As he says, this is my blood poured out for you. Will you take some juice and drink it and receive his forgiveness for your sins? Let's keep letting Jesus serve us.